Andrew and Tristan Tate, brothers who have been charged with numerous crimes against women and girls in their current country, Romania. What exactly are the charges that they face? Are they truly just super masculine dudes with squeaky clean pasts who are just being attacked by my matrix? I'm explaining a little bit about the cases against them today. So let's not waste time, because kids need saving and protecting. The wicked flee when no man pursue it, but the righteous are bold as a lion. In episode 17, if you recall, I did talk briefly about the Tate brothers. I highlighted their creepy attraction to teenagers, specifically showing a number of clips of the older brother, Andrew Tate, proudly boasting of his desire to hook up with virgin teens. Since I'm a Christian, I do want to be very clear about this. The practice of hooking up in itself is bad enough because it's sin. Sex before marriage, a.k.a. fornication, is against the law of God. And the fact that the Tates, both Tate brothers, are unashamed to brag about fornicating with teenagers makes things worse, in my opinion. In many of the clips that are circulating online of them saying this stuff, they were already in their mid-twenties and older. Today, Tristan is 36 and Andrew is 37. Now, looking at this legally, the age of consent for sex between two consenting individuals is 16 in Romania. Now, that's the same in many countries, and to some, uh, to the chagrin of some people, that's the same age of consent in many states in the United States. Uh, while I, th while I think there definitely should be limitations on the age gap, uh, that's not the topic of today's show. The reason I hadn't covered the Tates in greater detail so far is because, until recently, they had not been formally charged with engaging in sex with or trafficking of minors. Now that that has changed, I want to read off the charges against them. First, I do want to do a brief review of the definition of human trafficking because I want you, my audience, to recall what it actually means. What actually is human trafficking? We have to be clear about the definition before we discuss the Tate case because things can get confusing and um, the Tates are really good about spinning themselves as as just good old boys being attacked by uh, the deep state and everybody's against them, the world's against them, and they are Neo, and they took the red pill, blah, blah, blah. They're, they've really uh, got their lies spun up, and they've got a lot of people convinced. But let's review the definition of human trafficking. As you can see, I have my handy-dandy tablet today. And I might be using this uh, from here on out because this thing is a handy-dandy piece of equipment. So, human trafficking. Now, this is, a, this is the definition that is recognized internationally. And it's been this, pretty much the same consistent definition since the year 2000. According to the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000, or TVPA, human trafficking is a crime involving the exploitation of someone for the purpose of compelled labor or a commercial sex act through the use of force, fraud, or coercion. According to federal law, quote, a commercial sex act means any sex act on account of which anything of value is given or 
or given to or received by any person. So any exchange of funds that happens becomes commercial sex. Anything of value could include food, shelter, protection, gifts, or clothing. Where a person younger than 18 is induced to perform a commercial sex act, it is a crime regardless of whether there is force, fraud, or coercion. So, if a minor is induced to commit a commercial sex act to sell their body, whether it's on camera or in person, for, for, for food, shelter, money, etc., it's automatically a commercial sex act. It's automatically a crime. Um, it says, human trafficking occurs when a trafficker exploits a person by using force, fraud, or coercion to make them perform compelled labor or commercial sex. There are two types of trafficking, labor and sex. I think that's pretty clear by now. <clears throat> now again, human trafficking, there has to be three things that take place. There has to be an action, which could be recruiting a person, harboring them, transporting them, providing um, something of value to them, uh, obtaining, patronizing, soliciting, and advertising. Uh, the means, how it's carried out, how, how the uh, trafficker carries out the trafficking. They commit force. They force the person. They might... Um, force them through threats, threats of violence, of course, threats of withholding things from them. They might threaten to, they might coerce them by threatening to expose them to their family members. Uh, for example, they might have, um, they might blackmail them through images that they have of them. Uh, fraud, they're obviously, they're lying to them. They're, they're stealing from them in, in, uh, their business exchanges, that const that could be fraud. I'm just giving examples. Coercion, of course. I mean, that's kind of connected to force. I mean, coercion is not necessarily you're not necessarily tying the person up. You're not necessarily chaining them to to a wall or 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 to inside a truck. Uh, you're coercing them. So there's implied threats. If you don't do this, such and such will happen. Um, people should be very familiar with with what coercion feels like. Uh, considering the um, COVID mandates that happened. Um, and then purpose, obviously for commercial sex or for labor. Now, where it pertains to the Tate brothers, they used what's called the lover boy method of human trafficking. Uh, that's... That's a phrase. I don't think it's used much in legal terminology in the United States, but that's used in other countries. But um, the concept is definitely highlighted in the definition of human trafficking when you actually look at ways that people can commit fraud against somebody to induce them to um, be trafficked. Uh, when you, you can fraudulently recruit a person by promising them love, by promising them marriage, by promising them a home life of man and of similar to husband and wife, a domestic relationship. And you don't actually deliver on that promise, you just use that to get them to your abode. And then you use other means to control them, control where they go, uh, control who they're with at all times, control their money. Well, Interestingly, in the very first case, the current popular case that's happening against Andrew and Tristan Tate, there are over 10,000 pages of evidence against them in, in the court records. Um, this is just the first case against them. They have multiple at this point. Uh, the evidence in the first case includes text message exchanges between the Tate brothers, their two women accomplices, and the victims. More evidence. Uh, there's chat room logs. There's the Tate War Room, which is um, members who are uh, pay 
to be part of the Tate Tate's program and their their Hustlers University and and whatnot. And and Tate teaches these these paid uh, these paid memberships teaches these members uh, how to do what he's doing, how to practice his uh, commercial sex acts, how how, to, how he's running his program and how he's running his organization. Uh, also, evidence includes WhatsApp messages and Telegram messages, uh, CCTV footage around the Tate compound, their property. Um, that's being used as evidence in this case. Witness statements, phone calls that the Tates made from prison. Uh, apparently, Andrew Tate wasn't bright enough to realize that his prison phone call would be recorded, and um, I believe I read in one one instance he actually uh, is recorded on one phone call specifically telling his two accomplice women to make sure you produce, make sure you put out videos and, and make sure the women put out videos of talking well of me. Um, uh, other evidence, of course, there are multiple social media posts and there are multiple, 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 multiple self-snitch videos are being used as evidence. In June of 2023, in uh, Romania had released a very short, shortened, and redacted document in English that states exactly what the Tates are being charged with. And here they are. Uh, this case is a criminal case. Andrew Tate is being charged with forming an organized criminal group, four material acts of human trafficking in continued form, uh, continued form meaning he did it more than once and he intended to continue doing it, and he was uh, in, like, the continued process. Two material acts of rape in continued form. Tristan Tate has been charged with forming an organized criminal group, three material acts of human trafficking in continued form, and instigating assault. The female accomplices of the Tates. So they are, they are basically the Ghislaine Maxwells, if you recall the Epstein trials. Uh, the accomplices to the Tates, they helped the Tate brothers recruit women um, and help them keep track of the women and control them and maintain uh, their their accounts on their on the um, TikTok, OnlyFans, and uh, I, I forget the other um, pornographic site that they were on. Uh, Chatterbait, that was another one. Uh, their name, so the names of these two women accomplices are Georgiana Nagel and Luana Radu. Georgiana Nagel is charged with forming an organized criminal group, six material acts of human trafficking in continued form, and assault or other acts of violence. And then Luana Radu is charged with forming an organized criminal group, five material acts of human trafficking in continued form. So, this first case has a total of seven victims. Now, the Tates are repeatedly lying to the public on social media, specifically on X, and, and then on their uh, videos that they produce on Rumble and, and whatnot. They're lying and claiming that all seven of those victims are not victims and that all seven of them are defending the Tates, and they're denying these things that Romania is accusing them of. Um, the fact is, five of the seven victims have given statements to... Uh, DCOT, which is the, um, which is Romania's version of the FBI. Uh, five of the victims have given Tate statements against the Tate brothers, and um, they are in fact not defending the Tates. L O L. Anyways, from that case, we do have multiple profiles on social media, on YouTube and X mostly. Um, these profiles are crayon murders. Uh, Milk Bar TV, Mer Mercia Barbu, I, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he's a journalist in Romania. Uh, Lucy Brown, I believe she's also a journalist, I think in the UK. Bruce Rivers, who is a, a U.S. attorney, uh, common sense skeptic. Matt Jury Law, he's the uh, lawyer in the UK who is representing a few victims on one of the UK cases. Uh, so these these profiles are have been providing and discussing factual evidence uh, that's available to the public uh, from the case so far. 
let me actually give you all some specific examples uh, that journal journalists have been able to get their hands on and post online so far. Here we go. All right, so this is a message um, being used in the Tate case. Uh, it's a verified WhatsApp message. This was posted by Crayon Murders. This was seized from Luana, Luana's phone. Um, so one of the girls, one of the victims, wanted to quit. And this is what Luana and Tristan Tate were discussing in this chat. Tristan Tate, the move now is as follows. Georgiana says, okay. Tristan Tate says, both of you go, get her out of the house, hit her if you have to. I don't care. Don't let her take her things. Luana, thanks. Luana, okay. Tristan Tate, when you kick her out, keep her stuff in Georgiana's car. So Yasmina can't give it to her if she comes back later. Throw her out of the house with nothing. Georgiana, you've seen me do this ten times. Go and do it now. Both. Georgiana, we're on it. And then here's further case evidence against Tristan Tate. So this is a summary of part of the witness state, one of the witness statements. And this also was posted on X by uh, Crayon Murders. Uh, statement says, D -d 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 blank is also the caregiver for the minor child that Abigail, a.k.a. Abby, has with, has with defendant Tristan Tate. So this is um, Tristan Tate's baby mama, or at least one of them. Um, so, so they have this child together so that the latter, Tristan Tate, can create content for TikTok. And, no. <laughs> so that Abby, not Tristan Tate, can create content for TikTok and OnlyFans. Uh, blank was taking care of the minor child with the consent of defendant Georgiana Nagel, in the sense that the latter informed her not to take care of the minor child named Blank if Abby did not create content for OnlyFans in exchange for these services, as well as for taking care of uh, Georgiana's property, etc. Blah, blah, blah. So basically, uh, they were threatening not to take care of Abby's child, not to uh, babysit while the mother of um, Tristan's baby was producing pornographic content for Tristan. Exploitation. Here's some, here's a text message exchange between Andrew Tate and one of the victims. The victim says, baby, I'll do it when you, when you're here. Okay. I don't want to film this. Andrew Tate says, you can trust 1000% or 10,000% either way. Um, Andrew Tate also says, I'll trust you with my business. Andrew Tate says, which is actually illegal. And then he says, don't worry. The victim says, it's not that I don't trust you. It's that I don't feel comfortable. And then Andrew says, you are my wife for life, which means you'll be my source of entertainment. Nobody else. The victim says, G is filming again. Angry face emoji. And then Andrew says back, I want to see you do what I say. It turns me on. The victim says, yes, but you're asking me to do it with girls who work for you or G. How does that make me more special to you? <clears throat> and she says, baby, I'm not going to F girls, just you. Baby, did you have sex with Betty too? And then Andrew replies, I own you. Stop answering me and stop peeing me off. You'll never be around real men again. You'll never go out alone again. Never. All right, here was another tweet from Crayon Murders. So um, Crayon Murders posted um, some of the transcripts from one of the self-snitching self, <laughs> self videos from Andrew Tate. Um, and this is Andrew Tate speaking. Quote, next, taxes. Tax is another important, tax is another element important to control your women, your woman. You won't pay anyone taxes because you'll get paid in Bitcoin. So you don't have to pay taxes to anyone. Interesting. But you have to tell your girl that you pay tax because girls are lazy and girls are stupid and girls don't under understand how taxes work. 
all right? So skipping on down, I'm just reading the highlighted portions because these are the most um, gruesome details of what he's uh, saying in this self-snitch video. So element of control. Two, it allows you to pay, pay him. I don't know why it says him. I think it's her. Pay her a lower percentage. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for each 10,000 they'd make, I'd give them three and I'd keep seven. They thought they were getting 50%. And I told them the disparity was because of taxes. I'm going to pause right there and point out the fact that, so not only did he use deception as far as lying to them about the relationship to recruit them into his porn pornography business, he also was lying to these women about how much he was paying them. That's fraud right there, folks. I mean, if even if this is a business, he's he's and he's teaching people in his self snitch videos, this this one in particular, how to do what he does. He's teaching them how to run the same business that he runs. He's supposed to be running this as a business. In fact, in this uh, self, this particular self snitch video is from his uh, former Hustlers University, if, if I recall, and he called it his PhD course, aka pimp and hose degree. All right, so <clears throat> he's lying to these women about what he, he what he's paying them. Uh, another quote of, from the same video, he says, if they don't believe you or if they want to play crazy or whatever, print out some tax forms. I see this all the time. I have to print out some random tax forms to say, yes, sign here and sign this. What's this? It's for the tax. You want to pay the tax and everything. Okay, and they just sign it. So he's talking about how... He'll even go so far as to print off a random tax form and just point in random spots and say, sign here, sign here. And just as a way to uh, carry on the lie that they're, they're, uh, why they're not getting paid so little. And then goes and he throws away, <laughs> throws away the tax forms. He says it in the video later on, throw it away. And then he keeps more of the money that the girls earned through their work. So if those weren't crazy enough, I have a couple video examples of Andrew Tate in his own words, um, talking a little bit about his business and how he actually feels about women. And also one voicemail message that he left, um, uh, uh, that he left for a former girlfriend of his. Um, before I play these, um, for you, before you listen, trigger warning, uh, these do have some vulgarities in it. Don't have little ears around listening as you hear these. Here goes. I have to fuck her so she obeys me. I don't give a shit about having sex with beautiful women. I fuck them so they listen to me. So I can get what I actually want, which is not them. It's a means to an end. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's exactly what I do. When I watch a Bond film and I see him basically pimp a bitch, to me that speaks to my heart. I've been there. I've done that. Anyone who's followed me long enough knows that I first made my million dollars with a webcam business. I have met beautiful women with a good personality and thought she will make me money. I have to fuck this bitch. I don't want to have sex with her. I just need the money. Yeah. So after listening to that one, um, I have a very hard time believing anybody who is going to try to convince me that Andrew Tate uh, had any genuine love for any of the women. Um, here's the next one. You didn't like that I was thinking I can do whatever I want to. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this planet. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I f***ing loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. You seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit. You didn't f***ing pass out. Chill the f*** out. Jesus Christ. I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? Now, after listening to that one, I can imagine um, some of the thoughts that are going through your head right now, because they're probably some of the same thoughts that went through my head when I first heard it, that I want this guy to rot in jail, and I still do. Um, this guy, in public, he pretends to have remorse. Actually, no, I don't think I've ever seen him show remorse. He He's pretty unapologetic with a lot of things. He just denies he denies, denies, denies. He shows pretty much no remorse, and uh, he does pretty much act like he can do no wrong. It's crazy. 
Moving on to the second case against the Tates. So this one was opened up in the UK in March 2024. Um, as far as I know, uh, at least it was the news came out about it uh, starting up again. This case is a an, another criminal one, and there are three victims claiming that the Tates raped and sexually assaulted them. Um, these claims from the victims uh, include being drugged and forced to commit sexual perversions. Now, I don't think any journalists have gotten a hold of any case evidence on uh, that one just yet, uh, so I'm sure there's more to come. Uh, the third case is also from the UK. This one is a civil case, so this is citizens, uh, private citizens, suing the Tates. Um, actually, no, these ones are suing just Andrew Tate. So this, the press release came out in May of 2024 by a law firm, McHugh, Jury, and Partners in the UK, and it explains that the, char uh, the charges that these four UK victims are bringing in against Andrew Tate are rape and serious sexual-slash-physical assault. Um, the fourth case is also from the UK. This is a civil one, and it's charging the Tate brothers with tax evasion. Now, for the final case that I want to discuss. Um, this latest criminal case is also from Romania. Now, Romania, uh, the Romanian authorities were already building uh, this second one. So they had been, they had already gathered a bunch of evidence and I'm sure they were, they were still making sure that they had uh, uh, an airtight case before they opened this, this next one all the way up. Um, but they were putting this together back in um, at the same time that they did the first case. So this second case, this one adds a total of 35 new victims, including two minors um, to charges uh, against the Tates. One of the minors was 15, and was 15 at least at the time that the events occurred, and the other was 17. So, regarding the minors specifically, Andrew is the one charged with engaging in sex with uh, the minor that was 15 years old at the time. Now, as I said earlier, in Romania, the age of consent is 16. Now, we know that minors cannot consent with significantly uh, consent to sex with significantly older adults. Uh, so, if we're being honest, automatically, if he if it's proven without a doubt that he definitely engaged in sex with a 15-year-old. That's automatic rape. I mean, he, he committed rape against a minor. Um, now, funny, not funny, something ended up happening. Uh, Tate tried to bribe that woman who, had, who was 15 at the time, tried to bribe the one that he's being charged with, uh, engaging in sex with uh, at 15. He tried to bribe that victim. And she ended up giving state, giving a statement to um, the Romanian authorities and even produced evidence, the text evidence, that he tried to bribe her. He tried to bribe her to say good things about him and to, um, and to not, dis I guess, not admit that they engaged in sex when she was 15. Um, so then now they have that evidence as well, which is cool. Um... Now, regarding the 17-year-old, as I understand it, that one it was um, Vivian. Now, Vivian is an ex-girlfriend of Andrew Tate's. Um, in fact, she is one of the first Ghislaine Maxwells that he had, supposedly. Um, and she stated just a couple months ago, if I recall correctly, she stated on Instagram that she is 26 years old today. According to Andrew Tate, they started dating in 2012. Now, if she's being honest about her age, and if he's accurate about the, the year when they started dating, um, in 2012, um, she was 14 at the time. Um, anyways, the age that he started dating her had to have been around 14, 15. Uh, but it's alleged that he started putting her on webcam at age 17. Now, in Romania, 18 is the minimum age for webcamming or pornography. So, him putting her on webcam at 17 years old 
makes it automatically human trafficking slash child pornography. So, now that you know a little bit more about the Tate brothers and the charges against them, you have to keep in mind that they, the Tate brothers, they want you to believe that all these cases against them, all these charges, they're all a farce. And the evidence is just being dug up, being pulled out of thin air, and, and unfortunately, there are famous influencers like Candace Owens, Tucker Carlson, uh, Piers Morgan, Mike Chernovich, journalist, um, and Zuby, uh, and many others, who have been helping the Tate brothers keep up their good guy facade to the public. In closing, I want to ask, do you have any loved ones or friends who consume content that the Tate brothers produce? Do you have any friends or family that has uh, mentioned anything about the war room or, uh, and I'm talking about the online war room, or have they mentioned Hustlers University at all? If so, I highly recommend that you help them to wean off of that content, to get away from the Tate content and avoid it at all costs uh, before they follow any of the degenerate advice that the Tate brothers give regarding women and relationships. These guys are some bad hombres. Their negative influence is teaching young men and, and some teen boys, uh, many teen boys, uh, in the East and West, how to mistreat, abu abuse, and exploit women. And the way to confront and counteract that garbage spewed by these guys is for bold men and women to speak up and expose them. And you know how we do that? We have to be bold as lions.